This podcast is meant for general health information and is not meant to override any medical advice. All questions will be screened and not contain any personal information. If you want a private consultation, contact us via positivechoice.org or you can contact your provider directly. Thank you and enjoy the episode. Hello, and welcome to the Positive Choice Wellness Podcast. My name is Annalise. I am an exercise physiologist and nutritionist. And my name is Melanie. I'm also an exercise physiologist and nutritionist. And today we are joined by a very special guest, our very own Samantha Noonan. Hello. Yay. (laughs) Sam works with us here at Positive Choice as a bariatric case manager. her big title is she's a physician assistant, uh, but she is also a certified holistic nutritionist and a personal trainer. So she's got just a whole diverse range of knowledge to many, share today. Many hats. I like this. I like the many hats we All got the going things. on today. <laughs> All the things that fit this place. So, Yeah, so welcome, Sam. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and see people. And even though we're socially distanced, it's it's still nice to like have conversation (laughs) it's almost like normal times where you just you know hang out like normal people did almost almost (laughs) well Sam how about how about we start today by just telling us a little bit about what got you so interested in the the health fitness field what brought you here oh man well I think it started way way back um I was always interested in um sort of you know, sports and um, healthy eating, because, mostly because of sports and being active. And um, I remember in high school being really into like anatomy and physiology and putting that all together and kind of saying, okay, how do I make a, you know, a career out of this where I can take what I've learned and, and sort of apply that and help people? And um, is there a way to do that? And I think, you know, the the, the short answer is I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do in those fields. And yes, I have my medicine background and, um, you know, also personal training and nutrition on the side because those are the, the other passions that I have. And um, it's just, it's been really, you know, kind of amazing to stumble upon, um, you know, the Kaiser Integrative Wellness Center and, and kind of put everything together where we work with all of those, um, you know, different areas and departments and in one, you know, under one roof. So, um, so yeah, just things that I'm passionate about. I love learning about it. I love researching. I love teaching about it. Um, and so, so here I am. I think that's why we all kind of fell in love with positive choice. Cause it's like, Oh, it's all the things we love in one. What a cool place. Yeah. Yeah, and and evolving and, um, you know, I think it's a really great place for for kind of growth and keeping up with all the the new research and, um, you know, this this field is definitely growing and as more information comes in, um, we know there's more that's tied together and so that's kind of the cool thing about it too is there's so many pieces to this puzzle that we call wellness and health and um, so that's pretty fascinating to me yes and the piece that the puzzle piece that we are going to focus on today is something that I think everybody loves and hates to talk about Mm -hmm. but we love to hate to talk about Mm -hmm. it all all the combinations (laughs) of love and hate but it's it's sugar sugar yes the uh the bittersweet part of sugar (laughs) (laughs) I love that pun the bittersweet part of sugar so what, why should we care, I guess? So it's, sugar is kind of a hot topic. I mean, I I think I became interested in it because um, growing up, I was part of like that those 90s children and, and the, the child of the parent who followed the low, uh, uh, I'm right? raising my hand. Right, yep, yep, like totally. low fat, like everything is low fat and, um, now all of a sudden the big kind of buzzword around health and wellness over the last you know 10 15 years since i've been studying um you know medicine and and wellness is is sugar is now the bad guy right sugar is the culprit and 
it was like for me kind of the light bulb went off and I was like why why like that's all I used to eat and it tastes so good and like why is this so bad for us and and is it you know is it bad for us what what are the facts and I think when you break it down um, into okay what is it and um, what is it doing to our our bodies um, then you can kind of gain an understanding for it. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to this complex. It's a, you know, I mean, it's a simple carbohydrate, but it's a, it's a complex molecule in the things that it can do, um, to the body. So yes, lots to, lots to go into. Well, I think let, let's start with just kind of defining some stuff, especially physiologically. Because our body breaks down almost everything we eat into glucose, mm-hmm. otherwise known as, you know, we're simply put sugar. Your blood sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your blood sugar. And it breaks it down into glucose because that's what our cells use. So to blanket statement sugar is bad is kind of, it's very short-sighted because our body fundamentally uses sugar for every single process Absolutely. It does. So we have to have it. Um, And then we get into the context of like blood sugar Mm -hmm. and and the complications around, well, the possible complications around that. Right. So, so exactly. So, so glucose, as we know, is um, our, it's our most basic fuel source. It is our source of energy that all of our cells and in um, our body use to function. So it is necessary. Um, you know, kind of everything, like you said, breaks down to glucose. Um, so that is, that is our, our main, our preferred source of energy for the body. I think the problem that we run into is when we have excess sugar. So when there's too much that we are not using, our body only needs so much energy throughout the day and especially I think as we have evolved now to a more sedentary lifestyle we need less and less yet we are consuming more and more so so the sugar itself is not the problem it's the access it's um, also you know how it's processed and put into foods and um, and then as a result, what that does to our, our body once it's, it's in our blood. And if we have deficiencies or um, issues with getting the sugar where it needs to go in the body um, as a result. So that's where the, the problem is kind of downstream. It's not with the actual sugar molecule itself, which is needed, necessary. So... Yeah, it's something that I have I've learned over the many years of being in this field now is since we can fundamentally break down everything we eat into sugar, we don't really need the added sugar necessarily since we're so good at getting it from other sources. Yes. Yet we find it in everything. Everything we eat will have some form of added sugar to it. Big time. And and this is where I have had to sort of deep dive into even what I, I eat myself because I have to preach this, you know, with my patients all the time. Um, and, and I think the big, one of the big um, common statements that I receive all the time from my patients is, oh, I don't eat, you know, cookies and sweets. Um, so I'm not, you know, I'm not getting a lot of, of sugars in my diet. And when we really look at it, you know, they start their day with a breakfast cereal and it's, you know, it's some type of flakes, like it could be, you know, barley or oat or, and, but the fourth ingredient on that list, if you flip that label and you look, that fourth ingredient is cane sugar, which means there's sugar added to it. So you're getting, you know, the sugar from the the wheat and the the whole grain, but also additional sugar. Um, Yogurt, peanut butter, um, pretty much all the things that I have for breakfast every day. <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. It's not these days. It's not obvious um, where you know sugar is. You're, nobody's nobody's loading you know table sugar into every meal that they eat from you know the sugar jar. It's it's just in there, um, you know, through processing. So so 
companies will add sugar to products, you know, for, for many different reasons. Taste is, is the obvious, but also, you know, for texture, for volume. Um, sometimes, you know, it, there's a whole, there's a, this whole kind of realm of food science that um, I'm totally interested in and could talk for another half hour about, but, um, you know, we'll keep it, we'll keep it simple. Um, so yeah, I mean, we'll have you back and everywhere. talk about it yeah. more. That's just <laughs> how it works. Something that I've heard from a few people, and I guess this is kind of stoked into some other part of the conversation, which would be, but sugar's natural because it mm. comes from a plant. And that's the argument that I hear because, you know, things that are natural must be good for us, Right. Exactly. <laughs> and and things from plants, right? All plant-based. You slap a bamboo font on it, and it is healthy for you now. Yes. So, 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 so both true and false. It, I mean, sugar is a plant-based product, right? It's a plant-based food, and we know here we preach this, this plant-based diet. The research tells us that, you know, overwhelmingly, you know, plant-based is the way to go. Um, but... It's sort of how that plant is being um, refined, processed, essentially. Um, if you're eating the sugar cane from the grass stalk, you know, probably not tasting so good. Um, but that's different than um, eating white table sugar or cane sugar. Um, that has been sent to a refinery and has been, you know, extracted most of the good stuff, the fiber, the nutrients, the small amount that are in um, that sugar cane or, or sugar beet. Um, and and it's, it's sort of creating this um, sort of stripped down version. And so there's nothing good in it, right? It's just, it tastes good, but there's nothing that is um really giving your body anything extra there's no antioxidants there's no vitamins in that sugar you know that um, cane sugar so that's that's where you know we kind of want to make sure that the things that we're eating we have such limited space in our stomachs in our bodies that everything that we put in has some sort of value so we're getting more bang for our buck um and with with simple um, added sugars that have been processed in a factory, you're not getting much bang for your buck. So, and with that comes an ability to consume more volume as well mm -hmm. with that refining process. So, if we were just chewing on the sugar cane, which some cultures yeah. do that, right? It's, yeah. it's sugar, it's delicious, or eating the sugar beets we would not consume the amount that we can consume in a day. Right, right. So yeah, when it's stripped down like that, you can, I mean, you can get a, a whole spoonful of, of sugar um, and that's, that's high volume, that's doing a lot. That's way more than our bodies are requiring for energy. Um, but when you remove, you know, the fiber, the thick, um, kind of roughage part, you're not going to feel full. You're not going to feel satisfied. Um, and that, that is why we consume so much of it, you know. I'm sure it's also problematic that it can dissolve very well in water, so mm -hmm. it does not hold as much volume as it could once it's dissolved because we process liquids real fast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, in fact, liquids are nowadays the most, um, it, it's where we find the most like hidden quote hidden sugars right is in our sodas in our energy drinks um coffee drinks coffee <laughs> even like the coffee creamers um so not just you know if you're drinking black coffee that's a different story but if you're adding you know it doesn't have to be just the syrup that you're adding to it your creamer has you know sugars in it and and all kinds of other you know chemicals that we won't get into but you know, yeah, it's it's everywhere. So, um, so yeah, it's it's out there. So a good first start would be to look at that ingredient list. Mm -hmm. Look for those those sugar names, and we we know sugar, right? Cane sugar. Are there any other like red flag words that people should be looking for on their ingredient list that would signify that? excess sugar has been added yes so so um 
marketing has come a long way. And now that the FDA has required these um, companies to label the added sugars, so not just sugar, but added, specifically added sugars, um, to the food labels. Like an actual numerical value. Yes, yes. So so you'll get the grams, and then you have to kind of follow that up in the ingredient list, which is another part of that, that food label. And I try to teach my patients to, to look, really look at that ingredient list um, because they will try to trick you. They will not come out and spell out sugar. It will not say added sugar in that ingredient list. It Evaporated will. cane juice. Yes, that's, that's my one, favorite right? one. Dehydrated it, cane syrup is another one. <laughs> uh-huh. So anything that says syrup, um, malt, um, concentrates. So um, sometimes it'll be, yeah, like a like a rice syrup or um, you know some type of fruit concentrate, and that's still that's been added. There's no fruit in that. It's been you know stripped down and added. Um, so anything that ends in os, so o s e, so you know fructose, um, lactose, for example, lactose. Yeah. So they'll they'll kind of give it the chemical name because again food science this is what they're you know they're doing and they'll say all right give us that chemical name because nobody's gonna know that this is sugar on the Sucrose. label mm-hmm. the actual chemical name for sugar <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> right so so yeah i mean it's it's tricky and they don't make it easy for us as consumers because the sugar is what sells the product, right? The sugar is, it's addictive. We know this. We know um, that it keeps you wanting more. Um, and so, yeah, marketing strategies, you know, companies are, are on to it. Um, and they're going to kind of do what they can to um, make sure that, you know, consumers are, are not in the know. Um, but our goal is to, to sort of help you become a little bit more knowledgeable in this stuff and just you know be able to look out for yourselves so you just touched on something that I was excited to dig in on a little bit today which was this idea of sugar addiction Ooh, okay what what are your thoughts on that so there's there's a good amount of research now some of it is older research um which sort of even back to like the early 2000s um, I mean, it has, they have proven that sugar's effect on the brain, um, it can impair that, that sort of self-control. It stimulates cravings for sugar, um, similar to like a, like a drug-like effect where um, it, it taps into that reward center of the brain. It lights it up and it says, oh, this is good, I need more of it. So they have actually compared sugar to um, these addictive drugs like opioids, and um, it, you know, it sort of, I think it was the beginning part of the gut-brain connection, you know, where like the serotonin and um, that's, you know, again, a whole nother topic, but but it is connected, what we eat, Um, affects our brain there's chemical signals that are are being sent um, you know from our gut to our brain and it it knows what to you know what to tap into so um, so yeah there's definitely it it stimulates that kind of craving sensation so yeah I, I was just reading about the learning theory of psychology and about how our brain is really developed to teach us what works mm-hmm. and to go back to it over and over again. So my thoughts when you when you were talking about this and sugar signaling that, that pleasure center in our brain, letting off some dopamine, the first time we experience that, our brain goes, oh, look at that. That was very pleasurable. And the more, the more cycles we get with that, the more our brain learns that, that this is a good thing. This is something that is going to release dopamine. It's going to release pleasure. Mm -hmm. And therein lies that, that cycle that develops. Right. Right. And it's almost, I mean, this is sort of what I think of, you know, it, it, 
in a way makes sense because we again going back to the very basics we need that glucose right our energy is dependent on glucose getting into the cells and so our brain is like okay we need to like this in order for our bodies to produce energy i think the the problem is nowadays we have access to we have over access so we have um, you know, sugar everywhere, essentially, <laughs> hidden everywhere, in everything, and we have access to it. And I think it's almost like that part of our brain has not evolved and caught up with where we are in society right now um, in terms of our access to it. So, I think there's a lot more to be said about that, too, oh, about yeah. a lot of things going on with our bodies <laughs> That's in just today's my society. <laughs> yeah. Um, so something that comes up a lot in classes that I teach that I think is just kind of an interesting point to do, like follow up with this is what a lot of the people who come into my classes, like healthy balance, they might be type 2 diabetic. And so their biggest concern are like, oh, I can't have fruit or I can't mm-hmm. have, you know, sweet potatoes or I can't have corn, you know, all these things because of the sugar content. And yes. so... I think it's a good question to ask is like, is, is there a difference between the presence of the sugar in foods n- naturally versus the sugar that we would see in like a soda or, you know, a pastry mm-hmm. or something? Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Awesome question. I mean, I get it all the time as well. And people are like afraid of bananas now. Yes. Like bananas are like a big one. Like I can't have bananas. Or carrots. <laughs> no, carrots. carrots. Ooh, no, no carrots. Right? It's crazy. But at the same time, they're also stopping by their favorite coffee shop in the morning <laughs> yes. and having a pastry and a flavored latte. And a frappuccino. <laughs> but they're the worried home. about the carrots. <laughs> yes. Because exactly. clearly the carrots are the problem. Yes. So yes, this is a big, a big, big, big one. Um, so the the sort of short answer is Um, Yes, there is sugar in carrots, there's sugar in um, bananas, and it's it's fructose. So it's, you know, it's going to break down to that glucose. Um, The difference is it is not processed sugar. So, um, so yeah, it's more natural. It is sugar. So if you're keeping tabs on your sugar, that counts. Um, But, again, your body needs some sugar, right? So if you're going to get it, you want it from a source that is also going to be combined with antioxidants, um, the, you know, phytonutrients that are in those fruits and vegetables, um, you know, the fiber. So, so really you're eating that carrot or that banana, not just for the sugar, you're eating it for the other nutrients that it contains. It's, it's a whole food. It has a lot more to it. Um, versus just the the cane sugar, which is just that you know white refined substance that's just going to give you a little glucose kick and possibly be stored as fat in excess. So that's the main difference. I think if you are eating you know bananas and carrots in your your diet, then you're doing yourself a favor. Just look out for the added sugars you know in the rest of your day so so yes you're totally getting sugars um i don't think anybody like overdoses on sugar from eating like bananas and carrots it's it's really you know what they're getting in addition to that that causes the problems so yeah whole foods are are great they're they're whole they have a lot of things that are also beneficial so that's what I try to explain. And what I'm thinking while we're talking about this is the other things that are not called sugar that behave in our bodies like sugar, like white flour. Mm-hmm. So white flour has essentially been stripped of the, the same things that refined sugar have been stripped of. So the fiber and the nutrients. And it because it is stripped down to just basically its own sugar when we eat white flour processed um, grains they uptake in our system much like sugar right so like when we're looking at you know yeah there's sugar in like a banana um it's coming with the fiber and the nutrients that go along with that as compared to let's say like a muffin where there's added sugar, but then there is also the base of it being 
white flour, which mm-hmm. is going to operate in your body like more sugar. It's a cumulative effect, yeah. And so now in this this small muffin that's not going to keep us very satisfied it has probably double the sugar that the banana has but now it will has other things in it that are going to compound and act like more sugar and that's going to send the signal to the brain that says more of this because oh we got God. a ton of sugar in that so Muffins we want are delicious more of it. <laughs> why wouldn't we want more that's right. Um, yeah. So so when you have these refined sugars or the refined flours, meaning everything is stripped down, that process was done in a factory, in a, in a lab, in a, a mill. Um, when we eat a banana, our body has to strip down to get to that glucose and it has to work for it. And so that's also requiring some energy and um so, you know, if you think about it, your body's doing more work and, and needs that energy from that banana. Um, it, it does not need it already broken down um, from the muffin or from the, the sugar. So that's one way of thinking about it. I like that. Um, now, and this is probably going to seem like the next obvious question, <laughs> which is, you know, if you don't want to have sugar, what about just replacing it with a non-calorie sweetener? Like, wouldn't that be a good alternative? Cha-ching. <laughs> yeah. I can have my cake and eat it too. Hooray. Yes. And this is, um, yes, this is a, a, a recent hot topic because... Um, it was like the solution to diabetes is like you can still have Diet Coke and you can have this aspartame and this chemical. We created this chemical that sort of tastes like sugar, although it's usually like hundreds of times sweeter than sugar. And it's not going to raise your blood sugar levels. It's not going to um, to spike your, your insulin. Um, and so basically it's just, it's like free sugar, you know, it's, it's just going in and it tastes good and it's not doing anything harmful. So we thought, um, it's one of those too good to be true kind of situations. Totally, totally, totally. Um, and I mean, number one for me, it's a, it's a chemical. Like it is, there is nothing natural about an artificial sweetener, you know, Food like it's, product. Yes. That's what I would call that. A, we call it a non-nutritive, um, sweetener, sweetener. Like there's nothing, there's literally nothing in it. Um, and we're finding now, um, there's, you know, there is research out there, um, that shows that these artificial sweeteners are now disrupting our intestinal flora. So our gut health, we're getting this sort of dysbiotic um, mess in our gut from these chemicals because the body is like, what the heck is this? <laughs> and it makes sense, you know, it's, it's not, there's nothing natural about this. These were created in, you know, like the 80s, 90s, um, and some maybe before that, but um, it's new, right? It's new to our our sort of anatomy and, and our biology is like, what the heck is this? Um, so yeah, it's not going to um, worsen your diabetes per se, but um, there's also a, a study that I, I just read um, that these they're finding that these artificial sweeteners can somehow um, sort of unlock your cells so like they get into your cells and they um, can contribute to fat storage in the cells so yeah they're not spiking your insulin which is like the thing that we look for or I'm sorry you're spiking your blood glucose which is the thing that we look for in you know to prevent in diabetics Um, but it's doing some other you know kind of funky things it's not we know it's not great for you Um, so would so would stevia fall into this category because like the first mm. thing i'm thinking is we're gonna have people listening but what about yeah. stevia because that's from a plant and it's natural <laughs> it is it is but the stevia that we put into our coffee and into our um you know baked goods and recipes is not the straight plant again it's sort of like cane sugar where it has been sent to a factory it's been stripped down it's had things added to it and taken away from it and it no longer is that that kind of whole leaf you know sweetener um so yeah there's um 
you know, and again, I, I also, similarly, I also have a lot of um, questions from patients about, well, what about honey or maple syrup, right? Because, or agave. you know, or agave or, you know, monk fruit. And the bottom line is it's, it's sugar, right? It's at the end of the day, it's sugar. And so if you are adding it to something that does not um, have sugar to sweeten the taste of it, you are adding sugar, you know? So just be aware, you know, calculate that into what you're doing in the day. It's, it's not, um, you know, if you're getting enough sugar from eating your fruits and vegetables, then you probably don't need that honey added to whatever it is. Um, so that's sort of at the end of the day, it, it is sugar is sugar, you know. Mm-hmm. That's what I always tell my kids. Sugar is sugar, sugar is sugar is sugar. sugar. It's same like salt is salt is salt is salt. They're right. all salt. They're all sugar. There's nothing special. It's not like one's better than the other. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's worth mentioning though that because we have so much sugar added to our processed food, that were you to monitor your diet and not eat any added sugar. Adding, you know, a teaspoon of honey to your tea or a couple of teaspoons of sugar to your coffee now becomes minimal Mm -hmm. because you're not getting it from pre-sweetened yogurts. You're not getting it from a pre-sweetened coffee drink or from soda. You are actively controlling Mm -hmm. how much. And when it comes down to added sugars, I always tell my patients, like, you would never add the amount of sugar that these companies are adding like you would never open up 12 packets of sugar and put that in your coffee yeah I mean some people might but most of us do not do that (laughs) right have you ever seen the um there's this model of a it's like a a cup that's filled with um just table sugar and next to it is like the can of whatever soft drink you know it is and it shows you how much actual cane sugar is in and it's like three quarters of the cup I mean it is it is crazy how much and I think those visuals are so helpful because again I didn't know until I started to really deep dive and pick into it and and like look at the labels and look at you know what's in our our foods because if I'm not making it and it's coming from a package or a wrapper or a bottle, you know, I should know what's in that, right? And it's it's more, it's awareness, you know, it's knowing what you're putting into your body. And, and that always blows my mind, that model of like how much sugar is actually in like one soda, one can of soda. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. More than you need for the whole day. Yes. Yeah, probably like a week, you know? I mean, it's, it's nuts. So. All right, Sam, one last question. I don't want to let you go, but I do I want to get this keep in. Talking. I'll come back. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to have you come back. Yes. But just to, to tie it together, if we are over-consuming sugar, what are some of the things that happen internally? Um, so, gosh, lots of – there's there's so many. I mean, we know that um, – Overconsumption of sugar causes weight gain. I mean, that's kind of like the big one. So this obesity epidemic that we are a part of, um, when you are obese, you are at risk for all of these other chronic conditions and chronic diseases. So, um, so that's kind of the the big thing. Um, but heart disease, um, you know, which is related to really inflammation. So when you have too much sugar in your blood vessels. Um, it's that sugar is kind of bouncing around and it's, it's really, um, essentially like, like spiky. Yeah. Yeah. It's scraping like the insides of your blood vessels. Think of it like that. Like that is such a gross visual for me, (laughs) but that's what creates the inflammation in our vessels and our heart. And, and now like the American Heart Association is all over this sugar because, um, we know that it, it's what contributes to like the number one killer, right? Is is heart disease, and um, so it increases your triglycerides. Um, it can disrupt hormones, so it's it's like endocrine, you know, your endocrine system. Um, you know, sugar can contribute to like acne. Um, so, 
it can the excess sugar and I'm, I'm careful now about how I say that is excess sugar can can really wreak havoc on our health in in many ways um, you know I think we hear a lot about the the obesity part and and weight gain but yeah hormones and um, heart um, you know blood vessels all of that stuff is affected so it has a big cumulative you know effect um, so I you know I think if you can be aware of the sugar that you're consuming and maybe a little bit more um, you know knowledgeable about like where it's coming from source of your food um, things like that focus on like whole foods on unprocessed foods so you know make it yourself if you can use basic ingredients um, those are those are kind of the things to, to focus on if you're going for overall health um, we're not even talking about you know weight loss or anything like that but just overall general health and wellness like really focus on you know your food and the source you know making sure it's it's whole unprocessed good stuff good sources such yeah. fantastic information oh. today well, thank you guys. I'm so happy to be here. We want you to keep talking. <laughs> yes, we're we're gonna have Sam come back I love and this. just dig into some of some of these side um, subjects. And if you guys have questions or you have um, a comment or you want us to cover a particular part of this deeper, yes. leave it in the comment section. We will read it. We will answer it in a future podcast. Yeah, we love talking about it. It's so. a big topic for half an hour. I don't know why we chose this. <laughs> <laughs> but until next time, everybody. Bye. Bye.